Happy Saturday, everybody. Guys, this week we could see interest rates absolutely skyrocket. I'm talking about welcome to the 8% mortgage again. Uh, and we're going to deep dive deep into Nashville housing today, where prices are going, where contract volume, active listings. My goal today is that if you are buying or selling in Nashville, that you will be more equipped and more prepared for what is happening in the housing market. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Ethan Flynn. I am a CPA. I'm also a licensed real estate agent. For, for the vast majority of people, I don't recommend you buy right now. However, if you are a cash heavy buyer and you are looking in the Williamson County area, we are happy to help you. Feel free to reach out. We'll have a conversation if it's a good fit for you and for us. Be happy to help you. We've got a great team. And without further ado, let's get into the data. First things first, guys. Treasury borrowing announcements have massively impacted the market. In fact, you remember when we touched 8% mortgage rates, it was because of the August Treasury refunding announcement. And basically what they do every quarter is they announce how they're going to issue debt and in what quantities they're going to issue the debt. And it has a massive impact on the market. Why? Because there's so much debt to issue that if they decided 100% of their debt, they're going to put it in the 10-year Treasury. Well, guess what? the interest rate on the 10-year treasury is going to skyrocket. So they have to figure out where to place all the debt they have to refinance and all the new issue they have to put. And because of that, in August they did this, it led to 8% mortgage rates, guys. In November they did this, and it led to the biggest decline in mortgage rates we've seen since the initial skyrocketing of rates back in 2022. So here's the thing, guys. We are about to see another refunding announcement this week. And if that announcement comes in, which, which by the way, guys, every time they have to announce it, they have to issue new debt. And it's not a little bit of debt. We're talking about 500 billion to a trillion dollars on top of what they have to refinance. So where they're going to issue all this debt matters tremendously to how interest rates will respond. And the problem is, is there's only so many buckets they can put it in. They have to put it somewhere. So it's going to happen next week, guys. And when it happens, I would expect a big move in the treasury. And personally, I think it'll go up, but it could go down. It, could, it, it just, it's, it's something that I don't understand, but I do know that it moves the markets. And I do know that they have a massive amount of debt that they have to refinance and they have to put it somewhere. Okay. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, and you can see Here's where mortgage rates went. You can see since August, they just moved right on up steadily till they hit 8% and then came crashing down. And now they've been moving up ever since. So is this next announcement gonna make mortgage rates go up? Personally, I think so. Now guys, just so you know, I, I've been a big advocate of renting. And let me show you why. Here, this is uh, this this post is by <clears throat> a guy named Austin Witt on, on Twitter. He, he hits Nashville housing pretty good. And he said, he said, look at this. $3,250 to rent this five bed, three and a half bath, almost 3,000 square foot house. Okay, $3,250. Or you can buy a four bed, four bath, almost 3,000 square foot house for $779. Both amount Julie, guys. This is my point about renting. Okay, he, if you put 5% down, your payment's gonna be $5,719. But if you put 20% down, your payment's still gonna be like $4,500, $4,600. Okay, $4,600. Versus thirty two fifty, are you really going to pay fourteen hundred dollars more a month to live in this, in the hopes that it would appreciate at some point? You know, look, there are all kinds of reasons to buy besides money. Especially if you can afford it, you should buy. If you can't afford it, don't buy. Rent. It's so much cheaper. But if you can afford it, there's plenty of reasons to buy that aren't monetary. But just keep in mind, if you are buying, you should be comfortable with the prospects of prices going down. That should be, you know, it should be on the forefront of your mind as a big possibility. Now, it's not a guarantee. Ultimately, long run, prices will go up. How it all transpires and timing and everything, we are in a very unaffordable state where it's just so much cheaper to rent. It really doesn't make a lot of sense from a financial perspective uh, to buy unless you just want to buy a call option on the housing market and, and pay $1,400 extra a month to, to have that option. I mean, it's, it's possible, right? And certainly Nashville. Nashville's got a lot of inbound migration, so it's a strong market, but doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Now, let's take a look at this map right here. This is contract volume year over year. And what I wanted to show you with this map, we're going to look at active listings next. But what I want to show you with this map is there are four counties. We've got Robertson, Davidson, Williamson, and Rutherford that all have had a decline in contract volume. Okay, that's demand. Demand. Uh, quantity demanded, I guess I should say, for those of us who are economists. Um Quantity demanded has declined. Now, there could be many, many reasons for that, but that's a big red flag. That's a positive for buyers, right? 
The problem is, is that when we look at active listings, only one of those four counties that had a decline in contract volume had an increase in active listings, and that is Davidson County. So think about how bearish that is for Davidson County, guys. Davidson County had an increase in active listings. By the way, this is for single family homes. Increase in active listings, but a decline in contract volume. Okay, now Williamson County, the, the decline is just very small. It's only 1%. It's basically flat. But with Williamson County, 25, if you look at under a million, there has been a drop of 25% in active listings that are under a million. So the contract volume dropping drastically in Williamson County makes a lot of sense because there's 25% fewer homes under a million, which brings me to my next point. If it's over a million, there is a flood of new active listings in Williamson County. And so that makes, if you're buying a million dollar house, here, let's just change this. I was looking at $4 million houses, but let's change it to like one. Here we go. But if you're buying a million dollar house in Williamson County, I mean, look at these outer bands outside of 840. There are so many out here. There are million dollar neighborhoods, $2 million neighborhoods everywhere. Guys, I would just tell you, if I'm buying one of these, just be careful because there's so many million dollar listings. You want, there's no scarcity of land to build a million dollar house out here. So if I'm not buying in a more established urban area, okay, Brentwood, Franklin is even more established, even West Haven, which you know my comments on West Haven, but West Haven has, it's, it's established, it's got huge amounts of volume, it's still in demand, even with all this competition out there, it's been very strong. And so I would say West Haven's established, it's, it's a very strong, it's much stronger neighborhood than some of these others that you just don't know. You could be buying out here. I mean, you're talking about millions, millions of dollars. You're buying in a neighborhood that, you know, they could build another neighborhood just like it right next to it. And that could be the new hottest thing. So I would be extremely careful with how you're buying in Williamson County on the higher, the more expensive uh, areas. And then on the lower areas, there's just so much less inventory that it makes a lot of sense to just either wait. Uh, it's just, there's not a lot of good options if you're under a million dollars in Williamson County. I hate it. I hate it. Wilson. Wilson is the hottest county there is. Look at this. Active listings down 8%. Contract volume up 20% year over year. So this could be due to uh, new build neighborhoods. I don't know. I haven't dug into it. But the bottom line is contract volume up, active listings down. Wilson is the strongest uh, county right now when we just look at those two metrics. And so that bodes well for pricing and for the strength of the housing market. Bottom line here, guys, is Davidson County is very weak, but that doesn't mean Nashville's weak. And when we look at what's happening, this is Greater Nashville Realtors, and we look at the price, you know, median price is $450,000 last January. This is for 20, this is 2023. Prices trough. This was actually the bottom of the market. It, it went up from here. Prices troughed at 450 in January, close volume 1400. Okay, what do we expect this time? Well, I, I know how Greater Nashville Realtors actually pulls their pool. And if they pulled it today, it'd be 465. Now, I told you guys, I thought it would be a little bit lower than it was last month, around the 460s, upper 460s, 465, 475, still very stable. When we look at under contract, it's going to stay in that state. It's going to be 465 to 475. And so because of that, we've got stable prices, 465, that's 3% higher. Prices will be higher year over year by 3%. Okay, close volume is going to be higher. Uh, I don't know yet. January is very hard to predict because of the noise coming out of December, but we know that contract volume was up 16% coming out of December. So very likely, <clears throat> we're at what, 1,100 right now? <clears throat> very likely we'll be over 1,400 by the end of the month. Um, and so you have close volume. You have close volume that'll be up prices that'll be up and inventory that'll be down for the market for single family homes. Inventory will be down. Guys, that is strong. Looking to February, we looked at under contract guys. Prices don't look to be dropping. That means February is going to be up 3% ish, give or take. <clears throat> inventory flat to down could be down. Close volume. There's an extra day in February. It's very possible you'll see close volume be up just because of that extra day. Now we know that extra day doesn't actually change the dynamics of the market but it does change the narrative. Because <clears throat> when people look at this, they'll think, oh, close volume is up for February. So close volume could be up for February, even though contract volume isn't up across the board. Um, it's not down enough for me to be confident that close volume would be down. Okay, so up for two months in a row, prices year over year up 3% for two months in a row, and inventory down for two months in a row. Guys, 
you put that together and the spring season in Nashville is very, very strong, guys. Very strong. So just keep that in mind. We look at we look at contract volume. Here's what I'm going to be looking for, okay? The most important number, it peaked in February 27th, contract volume for the spring. Then it peaked again in May. I'm really interested to see where our contract volume ends at the end of February. That, to me, is the next most important date on contract volume. On active listings, this is obviously the most important thing that there is. We want to see active listings go up if you want prices to soften or stabilize or even just buy a decent house. You want active listings to go up, and it does appear like it could be up year over year as we get into February. So hopefully we get that more new listings on the market. Even if we get contract volume to go up, it is possible we could see active listings accumulate. We want to see a year over year increase in active listings. So finger, fingers crossed we get that. When we look at contract volume, <clears throat> contract volume is going vertical. It just took off. So if you are thinking about buying or selling and, and you want to talk, feel free to reach out. My contact's in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. Click like if this was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Have a good weekend.